YouTube, it's your boy Lake, man, and I'm back here with another reaction video. It's live and right now. I'm about to react to Forensic Files, and this one's called Hear No Evil. Now, Forensic Files. Y'all know these are my favorite reactions to do, you feel me, besides my music reactions and my uh funny reactions and my story times, you feel me, like, because I always tell y'all, like, these right here, these reactions, you hear the most craziest stuff that these people do to the so-called people they love or just innocent people that didn't deserve this nonsense to them, you feel me? And with this one right here, a lot of y'all was like, Lane, you got to react to this episode because it's one of the ones where you're going to be like, bro, what the, feel me? So we about to see, you feel me? And just by the title, this sounds crazy, you feel me? So we about to see what happened, you feel me? But before I get started, y'all know if y'all new over here, make sure to hit that sub button, you feel me? And make sure to check out my other reactions too, like my music reactions, story times, funny reactions, like all that. You feel me? If y'all haven't already, you feel me? And y'all make sure to check out my Life Forensic File playlist, you feel me? Because I, in case y'all don't want to watch my music reactions, the story times, you feel me? Or my other reactions that I do, which I want y'all to, but you feel me? If you don't, you feel me? Then I got a playlist, like that's with all my forensic file reactions like on there you feel me so check that out if y'all haven't either you feel me but this that forensic files here no evil and y'all know these forensic files we about to chill for the next 20 25 minutes you feel me and we about to see what happened you feel me and let's get into a slime let's go you feel me so make sure y'all grab grab your favorite snack smoke whatever drink whatever bro because Man, let me fix my t-shirt, bro. Like, what, my t-shirt coming down, bro. What's going on? But, you feel me? I got lost because I was trying to fix my, you feel me? But, fix my t-shirt. But, listen, make sure you grab your favorite snack, drink, you feel me, smoke, whatever. Because we about to figure out what happened, you feel me? So, let's get into a slime. Let's go. Let's get it. And if y'all like, bro, Lang, bro, you look super tired or whatever, bro. It's 3 in the morning, you feel me? So, it is what it is, you feel me? I had to get this out for y'all, you feel me? Because I love y'all, like, it's what we do, you feel me? It is what it is. So let's get it. A woman goes missing. An obvious possibility was an abduction. Police find hints of a secret life inside the victim's computer. The internet opens up a whole new superhighway of suspects. And disturbing evidence in an unexpected location. Something had happened in that basement. They almost look like chainsaw marks. Scientists provide answers that no one wanted to accept. When they introduce you to the chaplain, you know the news you're going to receive is not good. It was a February morning in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. A routine workday for JDS Industries, a company that makes trophies for sports teams. Routine, except one of their most dependable employees, Darlene Vandergeesen, didn't report to work for a second straight day. On Friday, when she did not show up for work, her boss called her parents, uh, Dean and Jean. Darlene's parents immediately drove to Darlene's apartment since they had their own key. We went to her apartment and we saw her cell phone. We knew something was wrong. Because mm. she she never traveled anywhere, never did anything without having that cell phone so people could get a hold of her if they needed to. Mm. Darlene's cell phone was especially important to her since she was deaf. Deaf mm. people rely heavily on cell phones and text messaging, instant messaging. That's their lifeline with the hearing. And that's true, bro. I got a homeboy that was dead, bro. And that's how, you feel me? That would, you would have to, I would, boy, I would have to, you gotta have that boy junk turned on max, boy, so he can hear you call, boy, you know what I'm saying? But that's true. World. Darlene's cell phone records indicated she hadn't used her phone for the past two days. Police found nothing inside the apartment to indicate foul play. Mm. There was no sign of a forced entry. There was no sign of a struggle. There was no overturned furniture or no broken items in her apartment. Later that day, a restaurant employee called police reporting an abandoned truck in their parking lot. The truck was Darlene's. Mm. 
The police were hoping that that would be a clue as to uh, who was with Darlene on that night, but no one in the Pizza Hut store remembered seeing Darlene. Darlene's parents told police they were concerned she had been using the internet to meet men. My reaction to her was I said, oh, Darlene, be so careful. There are so many, excuse the expression, weirdos out there. Nah, nah, moms, you right, bro, that there are weirdos out here, you feel me? That's, look, bro, I don't do the online, look, man. I don't knock no online dating, but, bro, like, there's just been too much that, like, you got catfishes, you got, you feel me, people trying to be pedophile, like, I can't say the word, but you trying, you know, that's trying to mess around with, you feel me, underage kids, it's like, bro, you feel me, I, I just, I just, I just, hey, you feel me, I stay off of that, you feel me, I'm not, uh, I'm from the old school, so I'm, I'm for like, you feel me, I'm from the era where like, you had to, I'm like, we got to go to the, we, 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 we see, we, we, we live in the same neighborhood or, you feel me, uh, by the girl or something, you feel me, we not, bro, all, like, bro, internet wasn't even for, like, around, like, it just had got introduced when I was coming up, so, like, I didn't, you feel me, but, like, hey, hey man, that day, online, hey, that's, it's, hey, it's, hey, that's dangerous, you feel me, like, it's dangerous. Investigators took Darlene's computer to the forensic lab, where they used a piece of software called NCASE. Using NCASE, we can run a different type of search. Uh, we can either run an internet search or an instant messaging search, email search. We can look at internet history to see what, what pages were visited and when. The search revealed several troubling emails Darlene had received 10 days before her disappearance. The emails were threatening, but it was almost, it was kind of in a childish way, kind of very poor English. They were from a woman identified online as... Bro, it don't matter, bro. A threat's a threat, you feel me? Like, it don't matter if it's in a child, bro. A threat's a threat, and it should be taken as such, bro. Like, come on, bro. Like, it don't matter what type of threat, bro. A threat is a threat to me, you feel me? Like. Wendy Smith. Hello, darling. You are a troublemaker. You are ugly and stupid, bitch. I hate you. According to Darlene's friends, she didn't know anyone by the name of Wendy Smith. We kind of assume that they're possibly written by a deaf person. My understanding is that deaf people don't necessarily speak conversational English like hearing people do. They speak more in blocky, unstructured sentences just to get uh, subject across. Having a deaf acquaintance wouldn't have been unusual since Darlene, too, was hearing impaired. We then sent a subpoena to Yahoo asking for any and all information regarding that account that was created. The computer analysis also revealed Darlene met a local man online, Jeff Flynn, and the two had been dating. Mm. Flynn worked as a field hand on a farm about a 90-minute drive away. But when police got to his apartment, he, too, was missing. The most recently anyone had seen him was Thursday, but no one knew where he had went. His friends down there were saying that that was unusual for him to leave town for an extended period of time. Unusual, indeed. In the days following Darlene Vandergeesen's disappearance, her casual boyfriend, Jeff Flynn, was nowhere to be found. When they suspected that Darlene might have just taken off uh, for a weekend with this gentleman, I insisted over and over, this is not Darlene. Just didn't ring true with her personality. Four days later, Jeff returned. He said he was visiting friends out of town. He was nervous. Most people are nervous when they speak to the police. He was nervous and concerned, concerned for Darlene. Inside the trunk of Jeff's car, evidence technicians found what looked like dried blood. Law enforcement's antenna really went up when they saw the, uh, the blood in the trunk. My presumptive testing showed that it was likely blood, and further testing confirmed that it was. But the detectives were interested if it was, in fact, human. 
when the police had told us they found blood in the car. How do you describe your heart sinking? Very, very low. But forensic testing quickly proved the blood was not Darlene's. It was deer blood. When they found out that the blood was deer blood, huge relief, a huge relief, because then the hope came back that possibly she was still alive somewhere. Meanwhile, investigators were able to trace the source of the threatening emails Darlene received shortly before her disappearance. When we did receive the emails that Darlene had received from Wendy Smith, that gave us the ability to send a subpoena to Yahoo to find out who may have created that Yahoo account. The emails came from this home in downtown Sioux Falls. The occupant was a deaf woman named Daphne Wright. Daphne said that she'd met Darlene several times at the deaf apartments, that she'd met her at the deaf club. 42-year-old Daphne Wright had no criminal record. During police questioning, Wright denied any involvement. I don't send many emails that could have been a hacker that did. I don't, think, I don't believe the hacker story. I think you sent the emails to her. You created an account with a different name and sent her the emails on those days, telling her to stay away from the deaf apartment. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, yeah, I did that. Okay, and you created the name Wendy Smith? Yes, I did that. A background check revealed Daphne Wright had been involved in a public altercation with Darlene Vandergeesen just five days before she disappeared. You can't think. Darlene was having dinner with Sally Ford, who was Daphne Wright's former lover. They had had a kind of an argument that the police had to be called to and she had to be escorted off the property. Daphne Wright told the police that she was jealous. She told the police that she thought that Darlene was destroying her relationship with her lover. But by all accounts, Darlene and Sally Ford were nothing more than casual friends. Darlene and this woman did not have a lesbian relationship. And in fact, Darlene was not a lesbian. Darlene took... That's what I was just about to say, like, bro, she had a whole boyfriend. Like, why? Like, what, bro? That don't even make sense. You feel me? Like, old friends, she had patched things up with Daphne right after this incident. She said, oh, mom, she says, we're friends now. We're all made up and we're comfortable with each other. It's all okay now. But when Daphne Wright was questioned about Darlene's disappearance, the jealousy was still apparent. We've had a lot of problems, Sally and I. Did you think Sally was cheating on you with Darlene? Yes, I thought so, and sometimes she lied. Who lied? Sally. Was Darlene the victim of a love triangle gone wrong? Daphne Wright's whereabouts on the night Darlene disappeared could provide the answer. After sending threatening emails to Darlene Vandergeesen, Daphne Wright became the prime suspect in her disappearance. Police got a search warrant for Daphne's house, and what they found inside was troubling. I remember the smell of paint and the smell of cleaning products, especially when we got down towards the basement. They look in the kitchen garbage, and there's a half full bottle of chainsaw oil. And they look a little further, and there's a receipt for Ace Hardware for a chainsaw purchase just a few days ago. This was the time of year in South Dakota where chainsaws are not in huge demand. But there was no chainsaw in Daphne's house or anywhere on her property. Downstairs, the basement had been painted with blue paint. There would be a, a spot painted here and then a spot painted there. And there'd be different sizes and things like that. Parts of the wall, not the whole wall. A three or four foot section of the floor, but not the whole floor. Parts of the steps, but not all the steps. A few feet away was a small room that had once been used to store coal. The floor was completely repainted in this 
blue paint that was still tacky and soft to the touch, indicating that it had been freshly painted. Police also noticed seven distinct symmetrical cuts in the concrete floor. Several of us made a comment that they almost looked like chainsaw marks. So law enforcement began their investigation by going to the Ace Hardware stores in town. Once there, investigators showed store clerks a photo lineup which included Daphne's picture. One of the clerks was able to say, yes, I sold the chainsaw to a woman and she was deaf. That matches the description of Daphne Wright uh, to a T. She came in with a note that said tree cutting machine. And he took her to the, to the wrong section at first because he misunderstood, but then he took her to the chainsaw section. She was very worried about the price and she picked out the cheapest chainsaw available at the store. Once scientists got into Daphne Wright's basement, they had no difficulty finding even more incriminating evidence on the wooden walls of the cold storage room. Mm. We were able to see on the walls that were some very small, tiny pieces of bone and what appeared to be tissue. Mm. Investigators collected the tissue and bone samples for analysis and compared those samples to the DNA they obtained from Darlene's tooth and hairbrushes. That day, we were met by a couple of detectives and we were escorted upstairs. And when we opened the room, when they introduced you to the chaplain and the chief of police and all the detectives are in the room and ask you, Bro, so you're telling me, bro, you did this because you assumed something, bro, that you didn't even know that was true. Like, you killed this woman because you, like, bro, what, bro? See, this the type of stuff I be, bro, like, what? She had a whole boyfriend, like, but she was not concerned about, like, nah, like, what? She was not concerned about you. Like, I'm, like, what the, bro? Wow, bro. Wow, that's, wow, man. Just wow. You just sit down. You know the news you're going to receive is not good. And it wasn't. Nope. Darlene's DNA matched the blood and tissue found in Daphne's basement. She felt that Darlene was coming in between her and Sally, and the only way that she could take care of it was to eliminate her from the picture. But investigators still had a problem. They didn't have Darlene's body. Mm. A jury likes a body, a jury likes a murder weapon, and you just never know. You get that one skeptical juror who doesn't, have, doesn't see the body, and there's maybe enough doubt for someone to say not guilty in a case like that. In their search, police first checked the dumpsters where Daphne and her neighbors disposed of their trash. By the time the officers got there, the dumpsters had already been dumped into the garbage truck and taken out to the city landfill. Police went to the Sioux Falls landfill, a 470-acre property that serviced five counties and almost a quarter of a million people. It was estimated that there was probably some Two to 300 tons of garbage have been brought out there in the days that we had um, been looking for Darlene. It That's crazy. They, they, they went through all That's crazy. That's what I'm telling. That's what I be trying. That's what I be trying to tell, bro. You're, you can't get away with, no. Ain't no way you can get away with doing something to somebody. Like, no, bro. Like, bro, they going to do the extreme to get like bro and then they going they going to find what they looking for eventually I promise you and then they really then you cooked like and then it's like bro you did this to this woman because you assumed something that you didn't even like it wasn't even true it wasn't factual like man that this is that's not man it's uh, man it's below zero with the frigid wind chill and all the police were volunteering out there searching. They had pitchforks and picks and they were picking through the trash, you know, one foot at a time. For the three dozen searchers, 
The job was difficult and frustrating. It went on for days, with no guarantee the body was even in the landfill. The conditions couldn't have been more horrid. It was freezing, it was windy, it was awful. And it was a, a massive effort to go through the contents of the I never been to uh, I never been to South Dakota, but is it that is is that cold out there? Like they saying it's below zero. It's really that cold. Y'all let me know. For my for my pe for the homies for the homies that watch me that live in South Dakota, is it that cold out there? Like y'all let me know. That's crazy if that if it's that cold, bro. That's crazy. I'm still looking for uh, Darlene. <laughs> She wanted to bring that little, that little morsel of, of joy into your life. And every time I saw a photo, I saw a smile and a big smile. Three weeks after Darlene Vandergeesen went missing, her friends, family, and the deaf community gathered for a memorial service, mm. even though investigators hadn't yet found her body. Mm. We knew we were gonna have a challenge ahead of us to locate her body. After five days of searching at the landfill, investigators got a break. They found the legs and lower torso mm. of an adult female. Mm. They also found bloody pieces of carpet and a blood-stained sweatshirt. Mm. It was a sweatshirt that had some graphics on it of sign language. So we knew right there there was a tie to the deaf community. Testing proved it was Darlene's blood on the sweatshirt. But someone else's DNA was found inside the sweatshirt. I took cuttings from the inside of the sweatshirt, hoping that one of them had transferred uh, enough DNA or enough skin cells to uh, the inside to get a full profile. And I was fortunate and did get a profile, and that matched Daphne Wright. By being able to put Daphne right inside a sweatshirt that had Darlene's Vandergeesen's blood and tissue on the front of it uh, was extremely important. The sweatshirt was... You killed, bro. You did this to the one... This is just all because of some shit, bro. You're... You're literally... My goodness. Jesus Christ, bro. Like... Wow, man, you took this innocent woman's life because you were some your assumptions that you didn't even know that you didn't even know that was factual. Like you didn't even check if it was true. You just went off emotion. Like uh, a critical item in this case because it was one of the few pieces that tied both victim and suspect together. Twenty-five miles away, across the border in Minnesota, a highway worker found. Darlene's torso wow. and her severed head encased in plastic. Mm. The medical examiner found Darlene suffered blunt force trauma to her head. It had been tied, cinched around her uh, throat with a piece of cord that was matched by one of our forensic people in Pier to a spool of cord hanging on the garage wall in the house that was occupied by Daphne Wright. The medical examiner had two theories as to how Darlene was murdered. Cause of death was either this blunt force trauma, the seven inch skull fracture, or suffocation from this bag being placed over her head, or a combination of the two. Prosecutors say Daphne was convinced Darlene was trying to steal her ex-girlfriend and wanted to prevent it. She asked Darlene to meet her at the pizza restaurant. But once there, she changed her mind and asked Darlene to come to her house instead. Once there, Daphne hit Darlene with a heavy object, pushed her down the stairs, then tied a thick bro this that's a shame bro that that's a shame bro all because she is so bro plastic bag around her head with cord from her home 
she later bought a chainsaw to dismember Darlene's body. She left behind the sales receipt, store witnesses, and plenty of forensic evidence. Daphne disposed of the body parts in nearby dumpsters and in a ditch 25 miles away. Later, she tried to hide the evidence with paint, but it wasn't nearly enough. There was this virtual mountain of evidence of the defendant's guilt. Those emails and what the emails showed us pointed us right to Daphne Wright. Daphne's motivation was one that has been throughout the ages in a homicide, is jealousy. The tragedy is that Darlene had no romantic interest in Daphne's ex-girlfriend, Sally Ford. Darlene was not interested in that. Darlene was not a lesbian person. Darlene and Sally did not have that kind of relationship. Daphne Wright was charged with first-degree murder and became the first woman in South Dakota history to face a possible death sentence. You want a mother to describe her daughter's murderer? A very cold-hearted... I don't know how to describe her. There's just no sense to it, and so the, the question why will more than likely never be answered unless Daphne herself will say why. Mm. I would have to describe Daphne Wright as just a cold-blooded murderer. To be able to dismember a human body with a chainsaw takes a lot of gall. Bro, you gotta be a, you gotta be in the head to do, you gotta be, something really gotta be wrong up here for you to do some stuff, to dismember somebody, bro. Feel me, that's not, man, bro. Shh. Takes a lot of spite, in my opinion. You really have to dislike somebody to do that to them. Daphne Wright was convicted, but the jury spared her life. Instead, she'll spend the rest of her life in prison with no possibility of parole. Nah, bro, the justice was justice wasn't served then, bro. She took so you telling me she she dismembered somebody and didn't get why why should her life be spared? Like I don't get for what? She she didn't spare her life, like for what? I don't what? Like, y'all can call me crucial in the comments, but bro, like, what is, what is that? That's not, that her mother got to go see her in the grave. What do you mean? So, so, is that, so you telling me that's just, that's justice right there? Her mom got to go, no, why should you have, why should her life get spared, bro? She should go out, nah, bro, you know what I mean? Ain't really much to talk about after that, you know what I mean? There was maybe one or two jurors that stood their ground very firmly from the beginning that no matter what, they would not go with the death penalty. One thing that just kept coming back was, what do we get out of sentencing her to the death penalty? What does she get out of it? What, do what do you mean? What? Is, what? Bro, she, she has to walk that line. She wanted to dismember. She dismembered somebody with a chainsaw. Let's not forget that. Let's don't do that, bro. You feel me? Nah, bro. Y'all know, bro. You feel me? Nah, y'all y'all babied her. Nah, she got babied, bro. She didn't spare that woman's life, bro. She took that woman's life, bro. That woman's mom got to go see her in the grave, bro. You feel me? What? What? Man, listen. You feel me? I'm going to end it right there because my camera's about to die. To me, justice didn't get served. Y'all let me know in the comments how y'all felt about this. You feel me? Y'all probably going to say, Lane, you tripping, but bro. It's, y'all probably like, bro, you, you wild, bro, it, you like, it's three in the morning, bro, and you recording this, and you, you tripping, but nah, bro, I ain't tripping, it is what it is, you feel me, I, but y'all let me know how y'all feel about it, you feel me, in the comments, um, and like I said, if y'all new over here, make sure to hit that sub button, make sure to check out my other friends and file reactions, and I got more, and, and if you don't, if you want to check out more of my reactions, you feel me, um, I got music reactions, the story times, forensic files, like this one, I got the, story i got everything just check them out you feel me um and i love y'all and like i said let me get y'all opinion in the comments you feel me and i love y'all y'all stay safe and i'm gonna get y'all next time 
already.